there is a big upgrade to properties in C Sharp 14. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the new field keyword, as well as what to do if you have a naming conflict. Now, for most of my training, I work to give an in-depth perspective on technology. But sometimes you just need a quick answer to the question, how do I do this? That's why I created this 10-minute training series. So let's look at this quick demo I have in a console application. I've created a person model. Pretty simple. It has a first and last name. Both are set to required. It has age, and then it has demo. Now, first, last name, and age are auto properties. Demo is a technically a full property with just a getter, but it has a private backing field called underscore demo. So in program.cs, I instantiate the, uh, the P instance with first and last name of Tim and Corey. And then I ask for the last name, the age, and the value of demo for this person. I do have a catch here because it will be throwing exceptions. I'll show you why in just a minute, but let's first run this and see how it runs. So it says last name is Corey. The age of the person is zero. Zero is the uh, default integer and the value of demo is test. So far, so good. But what happens if we have a user that gives us bad data? For example, what if in our try, I say last name, oh, sorry, p dot last name equals null. Now, last name is required. So if I had come up here and I had cut this out, it would give me accept or an error saying, hey, you need to provide a first and last name when you instantiate this because they're required. So I had to give it a last name. So this is not marked as nullable because it's always going to have a value. Well, kind of, because I trusted the user and the user said, hey, you know what? I'm going to put null in, in the value for last name. And that's allowed. Now, it's going to give me a green squiggly saying, hey, um, you probably shouldn't be doing this because it's not a nullable string. Um, but if I run this, the last name is and it's blank because it's actually null. And the age of the person is zero and the value of demo is still test. So that's a problem. Now, it used to be in .NET, or actually it's C Sharp 13 and before. Um, by the way, C Sharp 14 comes with .NET 10 and Visual Studio 2026. So it kind of all gets bundled together, but really it's a C Sharp 14, which some things will come back to previous versions of .NET. So that just means that this could work in previous versions of .NET. I'm not sure how far back it goes though. Okay, so for last name, what we used to, what we'd use to do is let's create this as a full property. This is the, the alternative. So prop full, and we'd say string uh, last name and last name. And then we come in here to value and we'd say, actually we'd say value, or if it's null, then throw new, um, let's throw a new argument null exception and say name of, and normally put value here, but I don't like putting value here because it's just gonna say value. We don't know what value it was. I like to put the property instead. So it's gonna say, hey, that was, that was null. So we run this again, and this time it says the exception is value can be null for parameter last name. That's what we used to do in C Sharp 13 and previous. It's a full property with a private backing field. Now, one of the benefits of auto properties is that you can change over to a full property without breaking things. So it still works the same way. And in fact, when you actually run the, the actual code, the, the IL code, it doesn't matter because it's the same thing. So, but this is a bit verbose. So what instead we have now with C-sharp 14 is we don't have to abandon the auto property. We can just abandon part of it. So let's break this down. We'll leave the getter just as it is. But for the setter, we can say, let's do our, uh, our fat arrow and say uh, field, that new keyword. This is the private backing field um, for, our, um, for our property. Now, you just could have say field equals value. And we put that we put value into the private backing field, which is essentially setting the value for last name. 
So this represents was what would be underscore last name, the private backing field, but now we just say it, call it field. Now we could also do this, um, this exception here, like so, just like so. And if we run this, we'll see that we get the same exception. It works the same way. It's just, we have five lines of code instead of uh, three, four, five, six, seven lines of code. We cut down some lines of code. We also have this getter assignment that we don't have to do because we're not doing anything with a getter. So this provides an intermediary step between an auto property, which is one line, and a full property, which is up to seven or more. Um, so what this allows for is just modify the set or just modify the get if you want using this field private backing field. So this is going to be, be the private backing field for each of the properties because it's scoped to the curly braces, actually scoped to the set, um, but it's scoped to this last name property so that if I were to say field in the first name property, I'd get the first name's private backing field. Now we can do something similar where we, you know, gate the age. So down here, remember, let's, you know, come back here and say, what if the person said uh, p dot age equals negative uh, five. So, well, that's problematic because a person shouldn't be, oh, I, I'm assigning null again. There we go. Let's null or assign null. And now the person's age is negative five. So let's say, no, we don't want that. Well, we can create or we can use just a setter. We can leave our getter alone. And this time for a setter, I will do the full curly braces, which we can do and say, if field is greater than zero and field is less than 120, that's a good age range to support. We can say field equals value. So the value is the thing coming in. We're gonna put it into the private backing field for age. Now, if we run this, it says the age is zero, even though we set the age to negative five because it ignored that. They could throw an exception and say, hey, you know, um, don't allow that, but we can just ignore it as well. Now, I created this demo property with a private backing field of demo for a reason. What if instead of calling it underscore demo, which is a good name for a private backing field, I called it field instead. Well, if I did that, it works. Notice we have green squiggies all over the place now, but it works, except for the fact that the value of demo is nothing. Why is it nothing? All we changed was the name of the, the private backing field. Yeah, no, we actually used this as, this is now the field keyword, which is the private backing field that gets built by um, the compiler. And so, it's not actually the same as this variable called field. So if you have a variable called field, first of all, you might want to change those, but there is a way to handle this. And that is to say this dot field. And this now refers to this variable as opposed to the hidden private backing field or the keyword backing field called field. If we run this now, we're back to the value of demo is test. Just so you know, you can also use the at keyword and that will work as well. It's the same thing. So the value of demo is test. Now you're getting green squigglies here saying, hey, you've got a string called field that might be conflicting with the private backing fields. So what I would do is when you upgrade to the new version of C Sharp, then I would make sure that if you have any, uh, variables called field, rename them. Just do a rename everywhere and rename them all to something else. That's the best case scenario. If you can't do that or really don't want to, then make sure wherever you're referring to that variable, you say this.field or at field. Then you can still use these private backing fields and not have a problem. Now, when it comes to other things, like if you were to have a, uh, a constructor where you said field equals uh, test two, something like that, that's not going to be a problem because this doesn't, the 
the constructor or another method doesn't have a private backing field. Therefore, this is only referring to this string. So if you were to run this, it's going to say test two, just fine. It's only for when you're inside of properties that you'll have a naming conflict between your variable and the keyword field. It's going to use the keyword field for the private backing field unless you specify at field or this dot field. So that's how the new field keyword works in C Sharp 14. Check it out. Let me know what your thoughts are. Thanks for watching. As always, I am Tim Corey.